night guys, how are you? Um, yeah, so we've just finished step nine um, and we're gonna continue with step 10. Um, while I'm clipping this B1 off, which is obviously this piece here, um, let me just tell you uh, that you can please check us out on Facebook, Pole Position RC Gear, and we're also on Instagram, uh, at Pole Position RC Gear. PolePositionRC.com is the website. Um, do check us out. Um, all of these videos are, on, of course, on the YouTube uh, channel. Just search for Pole Position RC. And uh, there we are. And so if you do end up liking this video, hopefully you do, um, be sure to hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified of all of the latest videos that we've got, um, crawlers, drifters, and everything. And let's see here, we've got, so that's how that fits. You can see the holes through there. Uh, we're not at bag B yet, so we're still, we're still working on, um, Still working on bag A. So we've got four screw, four washers, and four. I think these are three by 10. Are they three by 10 or three by 12? Oh, okay, I see. So it varies. There's different, there's different um, screws that you use depending on the height of the servo. So this here, this distance needs to be 24 millimeters from the bottom of this piece here to the top of this piece here. So using our handy dandy thing there. Okay, so that is just about, it's a little bit under 24 millimeters. So that we do need to have some spacers underneath there. So B5 and B6, we need to find the roughly one mil thick spacer. So we need B6. This is interesting. I've never done this, this type of uh, servo maneuvering before. Okay. And then when using B6 or no spacer, use the three by 10 mil screws, which are the ones I've already taken out. So that's good. So the distance there is uh, noted. You got 10 and 12. That's your 10 mil screw. And that's your 12 mil screw there. We're getting a focus. So that's what the uh, difference in uh, length is. So for the B6, which I need for this particular servo, I just need these shorter screws. All right. So we're just going to put that in there and get our pH two. And we're just going to start the screws. We're not going to screw them all the way down yet because I want to uh, just get them all going first. And you make sure you use these uh, these washers because um, they are a you know a load bearing component basically of your car. Geez, find it hard to get this washer past the threads. It's just like stuck in place. There we go.
Okay, so that is step 10 done. Okay, now we're on this piece here, which we need, is it gonna be that one? Yes. It needs to be upside down. Okay, so first thing is we're gonna need C14 from this bag. Oh, these are much, these are quite flexible. This, uh, these parts, you can see how flexible these are. Whereas these are, well, they're flexible, but only at the joints. Yeah, it's, these are, these pieces are a lot more flexible because it's the body posts and stuff like that. So these are a bit more rubbery, soft sort of plastic. Okay, so C14, which is gonna be this one. by tens. Okay, now again, don't over tighten this because this is a, a softer plastic than the gray stuff. So just be careful not to over tighten it. Um, so now we've got, let's see, three by 18s. It's gonna be So that once the three by 18, so those will be the shorter pair. Adjust screw temporarily. Ah, I see. So it actually, you have to slide it. There's like this sort of here. It actually slides into position, so it helps lock it in place. So it's just says temporarily, so that's all. When using other servos, adjusting position. Ah, use to adjust position. Attach so servo is, is, is in position shown at left. So that's about right. That's when you're, that is interesting. Okay, so I could have actually adjusted the servo uh, after I installed it, so that's okay. But it does need to be in the middle. Okay, so. B16 to B18. So this is, this is what I'm talking about here. So this, it needs to be in the middle where the chassis joins, that's where the middle of the screw head needs to be. So you can see there, it's nowhere near in the middle. Okay, so that is at least three or four mil off. I'm gonna say three for the moment. So I need B16 to 18. And those are these pieces, 16, 17, and 18. And I would imagine that these pieces, if you can see you can see the edges. Let me just move this so the camera's not focusing on the text. If you can see the edges, of this little, this section here, 
the gap between the end of this and the top of this looks to be about one mil. And the gap between that looks to be about two, and the gap between there and there looks to be about three. So let's see if my eyesight is anywhere near correct. Okay, maybe not. That might be, yeah, no, that might be two. That looks like about three. Yeah. Okay. So let's just pop this one off then. And that's why it says um, adjust temporarily. Because you see how far off that one is now. Okay. There's, you know, to be honest, I, uh, there's, there's a bit more to it than I originally assumed. There's um, quite a, a good amount of engineering that's going into this, I must say. Okay, so now that means we don't need the M, the 18 mil long ones. We need the 20 mil long screws, which are these longer screws because we're adding three mil to the length that we need now. So basically there's two different lengths of screws that they include to attach the servo mount. So we need the longer screws. So you can see there, that one's two mil uh, longer. Right. So putting this back in place. Um, let the linkage drop through that hole, get that lined up, make sure that thing doesn't drop. <laughs> and then we've already tapped the screws just a bit, or tapped the th screw holes. So now, if you can see there, that is just about spot on. Okay, so we're going to tighten these down now. Oh, it's very interesting. Quite uh, involved, to be honest, how it, how it all goes together. Okay, so that is nice and solid in there. And then the, this other side uh, will slot into this side of the chassis. Let's just test the, uh, make sure it does actually line up properly because we're going to be doing the diff front diff next i imagine so that is pretty close actually you know what i think it's one mil over that's one mil over okay that's what test fittings for that's fine i slightly overdid it on the estimation But it's a quick fix. <coughs> okay, so we're taking that number three off and we're putting the two back on. And trying to figure out how this goes all back on there. Okay, another test fitting. And I think that is a bit, a lot better now. Yeah, you see how that, the, this, the steering arm, basically, it looks like it's centered perfectly, okay? So that's, um, that's a very interesting way of getting that to work. So I'm just going to trim down these uh, bits of plastic sprue that are left. 
cutting away for myself, as I always try to remember to do. Because if nothing else, I'll rub on the ground. And you want maximum ground clearance, don't you? Okay. Right. So that, I believe, that's, that's step 11 done. Yeah, okay. So step 12 is repeat of step number one. So, we're back to the grease. Um, And I think we're opening, yes, we're opening bag B. Right. So there's all these plastic bushings that we're not going to be using, but we need to get these uh, these uh, these washers out anyway. So I'm just going to set these here because on this magnetized mat, the uh, very thin washers are kind of hard to pick up. Okay. So we do have some leftover screws, but that's just because they're... Um, to me, I give you plenty of, uh, of uh, different screws to use for your, um, so you can get the correct fit of everything. Right, so now we're doing all of this step again. So we've got the triple pieces here. And again, we've got the little syringe. Now it's a bit chilly here, uh, here in, uh, pull position offices so it's a uh, just a slightly the grease is a little bit stickier maybe than it would normally be but that is totally fine And actually, maybe a bit uh, appreciated because I mean, I don't think it'll ever get runny, but uh, you get the idea. Okay, so actually, this is not the first thing we should have been doing. I'm going to try and place that there. So we've got, and you put the washer on this piece. And this uh, oblong ovally opening is where the uh, the drive shaft is going to go. Okay, so there we go. We've got those in place. Oops. Right. Okay. And we just get a bunch, but not a huge amount of grease on there. And then we're going to get some grease. In those grooves, plop the planetary gears in. Where's my rag? And then more grease on top of the planetary gears. And then that one. And then more grease there. The other washer. And then more grease on top of that. So it's pretty pretty straightforward really. 
Okay, so now we just need those very small screws, which we had, uh, we actually have one extra one from the first step. So we've got these very small, shiny, shiny screws, and we've got our PH1 screwdriver. So with all the grease in there, just need to uh, compress it down a bit. So I'm not screwing that one down all the way just yet. Although it is almost as tight as it can go. Okay. Okay. So now we take our chassis half that has a servo in it and we've got this clunky gear and this chunky gear. I meant to say chunky, not clunky. Just because these are spinning pieces, just want to trim it and make sure there's no uh, protruding bits of plastic that are coming off it. Um, now we need four, five more uh, bearings. That one drop right in. That's where it needs to go. One more bearing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and do this slightly neater than I've done all the other ones. Now, in case you've missed the other videos that I've done on uh, this build, the reason why I'm uh, greasing them when they're already lightly greased from uh, from the package is so that um, basically because I will I, I do plan to be actually driving this out in the uh, you know out in weather conditions so um, if I was driving this say at the Tamiya track in Southern California where there's perfect weather all the time, uh, then, you know, be a different story, but that's not where I'm at. Uh, so this is just in case any water gets inside the, the, uh, the transmission case. I want to basically just make sure that uh, this is uh, waterproof grease, as you can see there, super waterproof grease. Um, and I just want to make sure that, uh, it's all good if, uh, if water does get inside. So this short shaft goes on this, uh, set of gears or that gear. Now I'm going to do the bearings on this one. It's kind of basically the same sort of concept as greasing the transmission on a uh, on a on a crawler on a rock crawler or trail truck. Um, although in that one instance, you will you will be uh, making sure to grease um, every connection of the. Every seam of the uh, 
of the transmission and axles and whatnot. Whereas in this case, I think that might be a little bit overkill, but it wouldn't hurt, to be honest. So it's definitely not a bad thing to do that if you were to go that extra, extra step. Okay, so now that grease, uh, that bear, uh, gear is got, has got its uh, plastic piece, uh, its stuff in there. Okay, now we're looking for the F trees, which I think are going to be this one. Yes. Because we've got this one next here, F7. So all of these are the F trees, apparently. Even though they're all kind of split up and spread around. So 7 is one of these pieces. And because that needs to fit in a holder, if you're very careful, you can cut towards yourself, but just don't use your thumb as a stopping point because a razor sharp scalpel doesn't care that your thumb is a stopping point. It will still go through your thumb. Okay. So this is, for whatever reason, they have a bearing in a plastic bearing holder. I suppose you can get a larger bearing if you wanted. Looks to be a 10 by 5 or something like that. As long as you have the correct outer diameter, inner diameter, and width. You can swap out this whole piece for a larger diameter bearing, which will be, um, the larger the bearing, the more durable the piece, basically. Okay, so we need this here. And that goes in there. Okay. And then this one. Doesn't specifically say to grease that this bevel one here, but I'm going to put some grease on it because it's a uh, it will need some grease because this is one of the transfer gears that will connect the prop shaft that goes from left uh, from front to back, I should say. So there we go, and then before we put this smaller gear in. I'm going to get, well, that's probably way too much grease in one bit. So that is, there we go. Now, just give that a good spin and just make sure the it's getting spread around enough. So you just want, so you can see that, uh, and you can get blue greases, red greases, whatever. Um, you can see that this is getting spread around enough. You just need a, a light, thin coating where you can see that it's got color on it. 
it's greased. Okay. Right. Now, I think we get another bearing out because you've got the other half of the transmission slash chassis. It's very weird thinking of it in that term. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do, we're going to basically connect these two um, and then call this step or this video done so that we can, uh, we're trying to do these in manageable sort of 30 minute chunks. It's a bit messier than normal, but it's all right. It's okay if a little bit too much grease gets on these bearings and gears. It's okay. It really is. All right. Now that one, that one goes here. And yeah, it gets pushed in all the way. And C17, which is the other uh, battery holder piece, gets installed on this half. Three by tens. Obviously, make sure that that, um, that body pin post faces up because that's what uh, is going to hold your battery in. There we go. So that's that post I'm talking about. Just trim off. So it's nice and round. There we go. The same on the other one. Okay. Okay, so nearly ready to install these. It's quite interesting that um, this just gets put in place there. <laughs> Um, but before we do that, remember, just like the first, uh, the rear transmission that we did, basically, it's going to get uh, a bit of a line of grease on this. There's already grease on the other uh, gears, and that will get spread throughout the uh, transmission here. But it won't hurt to bad just, you know, a bit more. There we go. Now you can see when that gets spread around. See all that nice red coloring gets spread all over the gears after a few revolutions. Might add a little bit more there. Overall, we're doing pretty good with the uh, with the grease. So I'll just add a bit more. If you put too much on, it adds um, too much uh, too much grippiness. So it looks like uh, too much grippiness to the you know it just makes everything stick too much, and it makes the it'll make the motor work a little bit too hard. Okay. So there's the front half of the transmission, and then we're just going to uh, install the screws here. Yeah, three by tens, and then we'll call this one done, this step done. So it's step 15. We're trucking along here.
Okay, so this is why it's nice to have uh, magnetic screw uh, magnetic screw heads. You can get right in deep there. So when you're tightening, or especially when you're loosening that screw, you don't have to wonder if you can actually get it out. It just, just comes out. Okay. So now, so obviously the next step is just to finish off the short wheelbase. So you can see, uh, let's see how it actually goes in like that. Look at that. Well, that's cool. And this is a rear motor car as well. So the motor's gonna, the weight of the motor's gonna sit at the back. Um, and that's cool. That's really, really neat. So that's the short wheelbase one. I think it's interesting that the that the Beetle is a long wheelbase car as well. So we've got um, if this were a short wheelbase, basically we'd just be just drilling it straight in there, and that's it. But we're on a long wheelbase car, so we're going to be using the two. If we're on medium, we'd have uh, this this long section to connect oh sorry for short there is a connection a spacer basically so it would sit about like that medium is a bit longer longer the long wheel base is so it's going to sit about that long so that's interesting which is going to be the rest of these pieces here basically these are the additional pieces to be adding to the chassis to make it um, medium and long wheelbase. So that is going to be step 16, um, which is going to be in the next video. So yeah, this one a little bit longer than uh, than I'd planned, but I wanted to get to uh, a nice good stopping point. So anyway, that is it for this step. Um, we've done, what did we get up to? I can't even remember. Anyway, we got up to step 16. We finished step 15. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyway, if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, um, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, um, you know, share the video, uh, whatever, and, uh, um, you know, please do. And um, check us out online, PolePositionRC.com, on Facebook, PolePositionRCGear, uh, and on Instagram, we are at PolePositionRCGear as well. So that is it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.